Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz where the more obscure your knowledge, the better your chances of winning. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Danielle from Cambridgeshire and this is my friend Alexi, who's from Elephant and Castle. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Andrew, this is my mum Siobhan and we're both from London. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Ed, this is my mum Caroline and we're from Newbury. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Pam. I've come from Bedfordshire today. And this is my son, Ben, who's come from Cheltenham. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you with us. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce, cruising the world of fact like Rob Brydon with an ocean view cabin. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Rob, hello. Hey there. Hey. Uh, two returning pairs, had very different shows though. Um, Caroline and Ed knocked out in round one, hopefully see a bit more of them this time. Alexi and Danielle got all the way through to the head-to-head, -head. good head-to-head yeah. -head as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, uh, Went to 2-1. Now it's interesting, Danielle says Alexi's from Elephant and Castle. Now I always thought, I always understood that Elephant and Castle, the name comes from the Infanta, Infanta de, de Castile, Castile, who had a summer home there. And, but apparently that's not true. No. I'm infuriated because it sounds well, there's so a, convincing. There's an ancient crest, isn't there, with an elephant mm, with, a, and a with a castle on it. But Infanta de Castile, mm. the Princess of Castile, Surely. sounds so convincing. Doesn't it? Yeah. I was fuming. I might, yeah. I might just keep saying that that's where it comes from. Yeah, come on. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you there. Thank that's, you. Where it, that's where it comes from. Yeah. There we are. We've said it. Thank you. Now, last time, we got through to the head-to-head -head with Matt and Reba. They didn't manage to win the jackpots. So we're adding another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £2,250. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play points. <laughs> it will always be the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated, so just keep your scores as low as you can. That's the only thing you have to do. Very, very best of luck. Otherwise, our first category this afternoon is... Definitions. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... ..things that end T-O-N. Richard. Uh, yep, we're going to show you seven definitions of words on each board. They all end T-O-N, but what are these words, please? Thank you very much. OK, let's reveal the first board of definitions, seven of them. Here they come. A small disc or knob attached to a garment, either to fasten it or for decoration. Subatomic particle with a positive electric charge, present in the nuclei of all elements. Surname of Dolly, US singer, known for her 1976 hit Jolene. Plant of the genus Gossypium, which is commercially grown to make fabric and thread. The largest moon of Neptune, named after a Greek sea god. An object that moves inside a hollow cylinder in an internal combustion engine to derive motion and an open four-wheeled horse-drawn carriage named after the son of Helios in Greek mythology. I'll read those all again. A small disc or knob attached to a garment, either to fasten it or for decoration. Subatomic particle with a positive electric charge, present in the nuclei of all elements. Surname of Dolly, US singer, known for her 1976 hit Jolene. Plant of the genus Gossypium which is commercially grown to make fabric and thread, the largest moon of Neptune named after a Greek sea god, an object that moves inside a hollow cylinder in an internal combustion engine to derive motion, and an open four-wheeled horse-drawn carriage named after the son of Helios in Greek mythology. There we are. Danielle, we come to you first. Um, welcome back to Point. Just remind us all about yourself, Danielle. Yeah, I am associate editor at a Jewish cultural magazine and uh, I'm also in a band with my partner. Uh, the, how often does the magazine come out? Oh, it comes out every three months. Oh, that's nice. It gives you a bit of time. <laughs> well, you say that, but we do stuff online as well throughout. I so. see. Where yeah. are you in the cycle right now? Mm, that's a good question. About... I think we are about a month away from about a month away. Print. When does it start getting down to crunch time? <laughs> about about now. a month away. <laughs> about a month away. OK. <laughs> a great time to be going off and appearing yeah, on Yeah, exactly. Stuff. That must have been popular. Um, Danielle, what are you going to go for? I am going to go for... Sorry, Alexi. <laughs> We're going to go for um, the plant... Cotton. Cotton. Cotton, says Danielle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said... Cotton. Cotton is right. Down he goes to 34. 34 for cotton. 
Yeah, they found cotton plants dating back to 450 BC in Peru. Been around a long time. I have no response, but that's great. You don't need it. You don't no, need any response. I just, wow. Yeah, it's wow. just a fact. Is it? I know, but it's... Do you want to know who found them? <sighs> yes. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's just Someone so did, annoying. Uh, Siobhan, welcome. Um, welcome to the show. Tell us all about yourself. Well, my name's Siobhan, and I uh, work as an operations manager in a photographic company. Uh, you, right, <laughs> OK. Photographic company. I mean, what's happened to photographic companies? Because I imagine every, lots of people can now, you know, we can all take photographs ourselves. Has, yes. there, been a, has there been a bit of a downturn since the uh, smartphone? With the, uh, yeah, or... a lot of people use it. But we, we, it's the professionals that are still using them for, like, sports and, oh, I see. Yeah, and journalism. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so you still have those. Because we mainly repair the cameras as well as sell. I see. That's what we do as well, so... OK, very good. Now, Siobhan, <laughs> yes. um, what are you going to go for? Words ending T-O-N. So I'm actually going to go for a, a really easy one because I'm really sorry, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the surname of Dolly, which is Parton. Parton, says Siobhan. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 <laughs> went for Dolly. It's going to be high. <laughs> oh. oh, you're not kidding. 88 <laughs> for Dolly Parton. Well, it's better than 100. Yeah, that is high, but you'd be amazed how many people would go for an answer that didn't end T-O-N. People, they look at the board, they forget the rules sometimes. So at least you avoided that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Caroline. Hello. <laughs> now, remind us all about yourself, Caroline. I'm a cycling coach and instructor and a diehard Brentford fan. Now, the, the cycling thing, <laughs> this is getting people to, up to cycling proficiency. Do you get people who are complete beginners? Yes. Yes, I do. And teach what is them the best? Ride. What's the best advice? Because I've now I've now taught three out of four of our children to get the pedals off and get them balancing first. So balance bike yeah. is, is the way. Balance bike or turn the bike into a balance bike. Okay. I mean, I did a lot of time just holding on to the back of them. No, 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 <laughs> but, uh, no, no. I did. I did a, a, a shallow slope. Always. Oh, that's slope. clever. Yeah, it's great. Shallow slope, it, of course. It, within half an hour, they were both up and away. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Caroline, what are you going to go for? I think I know all of them. A couple are a bit risky. Um, I'm going to have a punt, which might be turning your guts to jelly right now. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Greek sea god and say Triton. Triton for the Greek sea god. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Triton. Is it right? <gasps> it is right. <laughs> that goes down to six. Very well done indeed. Six for Triton. That's very well played, Caroline, especially for a Brentford fan. Uh, yeah, it was discovered. <laughs> it was discovered only weeks after uh, Neptune itself was discovered. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Pam, welcome to the show. Good to have you here, Pam. Tell us all about yourself. Um, I'm a retired teacher and massage therapist, and I now do volunteer work for the NSPCC, and enjoy travelling, going to theatres, exercising. Generally having a good time. <laughs> oh, how fantastic. And you've retired from the massage as well. I have, yeah, the hands. It's very hard, very hard physical work massage. I imagine it must be. Actually, yeah, it's very true. Mm. How many hours a day would you be doing it? Well, for? I only, at that point, I was still, I was already old. <laughs> so I only did a couple of sessions a week. Right. But, you know, you okay. do four massages back to back oh, and you certainly know about it. You know about it, yeah. I bet. Yeah. You need to massage yourself. <laughs> um, Pam, this is your board. It is, yeah. Do you want to talk us through it and fill in all the blanks? OK. The top one's a button, the next one's an atom. The object inside a hollow cylinder, I think, is a piston. And I'm going to take a risk on the bottom one and say phaeton. Phaeton or phaeton, yes, phaeton. Let's see crossed. how many of our 100 people said that. Is it right? Phaeton or phaeton? Who knows? Oh. Absolutely right, Pam. <laughs> Look at that. Down it goes to seven. That's a wonderful score. Phaeton. <laughs> Makes up for Atom. Uh, yes, doesn't it just? Terrific work on the last two podiums. Uh, really, really good. Yeah, you took us through the board, I would say, almost perfectly, but also almost catastrophically. Um, button was correct and uh, would have been a big scorer. They would have scored you 78. And Piston was correct as well, which would have scored you 36. Now, I couldn't have allowed Atom in just because that's not how it's spelt. And, and it's incorrect. Of course it's not. <laughs> no, it's not exactly. <laughs> I think you were so excited about Phaeton, you didn't really worry about it. Uh, do you know the answer to that Proton. one? Proton. Proton. Oh. And that would have scored 20 points. 
Thank you very much indeed, Richard. We'll be halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Six, well done, Caroline, the best score of the past. Then up we go, seven, 24. Then I'm afraid up to 88, Siobhan. Now, Siobhan, <laughs> did you find yourself thinking, oh, I did know that one? Oh, I knew that one after all. Uh, yeah, a couple of them, but yeah. the uh, but uh, it's, it's much harder when you're. It's team. much harder when you're over there. <laughs> I know it is. But Andrew, there's a bit of a weight Got on your car. shoulders there. Come on, work out for me. Come on, you can make it all good in the next pass. Good luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Okay, let's put seven more clues up on the board to words ending T O N, and here they come. We have got a type of low wooden sofa bed having an unsprung mattress, a small piece of fried or toasted bread typically served with soup or used as a garnish, a framework of rigid material supporting or protecting the body of an animal or plant, the main group of cyclists in a race, a person who looks after a church and churchyard, a member of a Germanic people who lived in Jutland in the 4th century BC, and the surname of Enid, the children's author who created Noddy and the famous Five. I'll read those all again. A type of low wooden sofa bed having an unsprung mattress, a small piece of fried or toasted bread typically served with soup or used as a garnish, a framework of rigid material supporting or protecting the body of an animal or plant, the main group of cyclists in a race, a person who looks after a church and churchyard, a member of a Germanic people who lived in Jutland in the 4th century BC, and the surname of Enid, the children's author who created Noddy and the famous Five. There we are, Ben. Welcome to Pointless. Thank you very much. Great to have you with us. Tell us all about yourself, Ben. Um, events and hospitality consultant, former chef, uh, and generally anything to do with those two industries. I mean, events consultant, that <laughs> sounds fun, doesn't it? Uh, I mean, events, yes. events are always good it fun. It can be. Uh, what sort of events are these? Outdoors in the summer, um, marquees and stages and fields, and then when it gets cold, jump back in the kitchen and do some, uh, some chefing. See, that's great fun. I mean, obviously, Cheltenham, the, the festival there. I mean, do you, do you get involved at all? Yeah, the, the it's a course? good time for tourism and, yeah, the, and, uh, and the economy in Cheltenham in March. And then, obviously, you've got science, jazz, literature, Plenty all coming to our town to there. have yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, never stops in Cheltenham. Um, there you are on seven. Fantastic low score from Pam in the first pass. You score 80. 80, Ben, or less, and you're through to the next round. Um, I will take the main group of cyclists in a race as Peloton. Peloton, says Ben. Here's your red line. Can you get below that with Peloton? Quite right. And you're through. And all of this is just room to spare. 28, very well done indeed. Taking your total. Up to 35. Very well played, Ben. It's a French word, also a Spanish word. It means squad or platoon. Platoon, of course it does. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Ed. Hi. Welcome back to Pointless. Uh, remind us all about yourself, Ed. Yeah, I'm a baker from Newbury. You're a baker? Now, yeah. what sort of outfit are you baking for? Are you baking for a huge shop or are you uh, baking we've for a got small baker shop? Or coffee that? shop started around Berkshire, mm, but nice. we also do wholesale bakery, so the companies want bread for a specific reason. We supply them, like, burger buns or any loaf they want, okay. really. Oh, do you sort of also sort of do the artisanal end of things, or, or is uh, it? I say it's all artisan. It's all handmade. So it's, that's, that's yeah. impressive. What time does your shift start? Six p.m. till two a.m. Oh. So it's not it's not too not bad. Too bad. But it does and mess up. Surrounded by the smell of, of fresh bread. Yeah, I mean that's, <laughs> that's meant to be a, a great incentive, isn't it? It's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> must be. Okay, now there you are on six. If you can score eighty-one or less. Round two is waiting. I say go along with the bread. I'm going to go for the small piece or fried or toasted bread as a crouton. A crouton. Uh, here is your red line. Lovely and high. Let's see how far below that we can get with crouton. Crouton's right and you're through. Ooh, 75 for crouton. Popular choice. Um, 81, your total. You had to go for it, though, as a baker, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, any type of bread can be used to make a crouton. It helps if it's um, slightly stale. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Slightly stale bread. Slightly stale bread. Cut in a square. Oh. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Um, there we are. Now, um, Andrew, uh, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Uh, tell us all about yourself, Andrew. Um, I'm an assistant merchandiser for a major retailer, and I've recently just become a dad as well. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. That's great. Uh, dad, for the first time. Yep. Um, uh, tell us about, about what, your child at the moment. <laughs> totally anonymous. Uh, he's a son. A he? Boy. Yep, he. 
name. <laughs> Jackson. Jackson. Hi, Jackson. Very good. He's going to love that. Strong name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like <laughs> um, Now then, Andrew, you are on 88. This is a high score. In fact, you are yes. currently our high scorers. Yeah, I think the only one that I know is not going to be the lowest score. So I'm going well, to have to go for it just because I think it's going to be a right answer. It's going to be the bottom one, the author of um, Famous Five, which is Ina Blyton. OK, Blyton says, Andrew, there's going to be no red line for you. You're the high scorers. How many of our 100 people said Blyton? Of course, it's Enid. Blyton takes you to 79. <laughs> that takes your total up to 167. Uh, yeah, she's the world's fourth most translated author, according to UNESCO. It's amazing, that isn't is it? It is amazing. Third, Shakespeare. Second, yes. Jules Verne. And the most translated author in the world? J.K. Rowley. Oh, no, Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. There. It's a good list, isn't Interesting. it? Interesting. That is a good list. Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. So, now, Alexi, well, listen, you're through. This is good news. But before we turn our minds to the board, uh, remind us all about yourself, Alexi. I'm a freelance culture and lifestyle journalist who writes mainly about uh, TV, music and food. See, that's just fun. Do you have uh, sort of plans to write other things as well? I mean, have you got a book you're longing to turn your attention to? I mean, I've got plans to write all sorts of things, but uh, who knows Who knows whether I'll get round to them or not. I mean, that's the beauty of being freelance, surely. Yeah. I'll, uh, maybe I'll turn this into a memoir. We don't know. There we go. My pointless life. There we are. <laughs> Sorry, that's... No, you, you know what I mean. My, uh, Surely that's your autobiography. That's title. mine. Sorry, yeah, exactly. You can't have that one. Yeah. Essentially, the, the two of us are racing to use the title My Pointless Life, aren't we? I mean, well. yeah. yeah. Um, OK, now, Alexi, as I say, you're through. Why not talk us through this board and fill in all the blanks? I think the top one's futon. The third one, I think, is either skeleton or exoskeleton. I guess, seeing as I'm through anyway, May as well go for a risky one in the hope of bumping the jackpot up. Why not? I'm going to go Breton for the Germanic people. Breton. OK, well, let's see if that's right. No red line, you're already through. How many of our 100 people said Breton? <laughs> not Breton, but I like your style there, Alexi. Uh, that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 134, but you're through. Anyway. Yeah, a valiant thing to do, uh, Alexi. Thank you for that. Do you know the answer to this one? Um, what do we call people from Germany? Teuton? Teuton is the ah. answer, yeah. Teutonic peoples. That's a pointless answer, so very well done if you said Teuton. Um, person who looks after a church or church. Sexton. Sexton, yeah. Would have scored you seven points. Yeah, nothing as scary as exoskeleton, just skeleton for the framework. And that would have scored you 40, and you're quite right at the top there. It is Futon, and Futon would have scored 57 points. Thank you very much indeed. So, at the end of our first round, the pair who are heading home with our high score of 167, Andrew and Chavon, and I'm afraid it's you. You'll be back next yeah. time, though, and now you've been through... You know, you've been around the course once. You'll be fine next time. And I'll expect you to go right through to the final. Um, but for thank now, thank you very much indeed, Andrew and Chavon. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. Very well done indeed, everybody. We made it through to round two. Great to have you here, Caroline and Ed. In fact, Caroline, you gave us our lowest individual score, so very well done with that. But you've all done brilliantly. Great to have you here. Our category for round two this afternoon is... pop music. Can you all decide in your pairs who wants to go first, who wants to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many acts who had a UK number one album in the 1970s as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the name of any artist or group had a UK number one album between January 1970 and December 1979, please, according to official charts company. Thank you very much indeed. So, acts who had UK number one albums in the 70s. Alexi. So... There is one that comes to mind, which I think is quite good, but I know there was an irregularity with the charts that week, so um, I'm going to try it and, and see what happens. Uh, it's the Sex Pistols. The Sex Pistols, says Alexi. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Sex Pistols. <sighs> Sex Pistols is right. That's a good answer. Six. Very well done indeed, Alexi. Six for the Sex Pistols. Yeah, 1977, very well played. I won't say the title of uh, the album because yeah, it's tea not. time. That's not tea time. And even yeah. all these years later... I know, still. Not really supposed no. to. 
No. Uh, Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Um, now, Ed. Hi. Not great, but I've got one, I've got one uh, in my mind, which I'm hoping is in the 70s, and I'm going to say Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac says Ed. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Fleetwood Mac. Ooh. Fleetwood Mac is right. Well, six is the only school we have. And that's one. Very well done indeed, Ed. One for Fleetwood Mac. This is great. I've rarely seen a mother look more delighted. Ed. Very well done. <laughs> so uh, proud. Yeah, two number one albums in the 70s, Tusk and Rumours, both of which I can say. Yep. Thank you very much indeed. Richard Nab. Ben. I had two. One was Fleetwood Mac. Uh, the other one, Bee Gees. Bee Gees. Bee Gees, says Ben. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bee Gees. Again, three correct answers. Very, very strong indeed. Six is our high score, one is our low. Four for the Bee Gees. Yeah, only one number one album in the 70s, Spirits, having flown in 1979, but they were involved in the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, which is one of the biggest selling albums of the 70s, but was, was not their album. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. Well done, Ed. One, the best score of the past. That's made up for round one. Then up to four, we're behind Ben and Pam, then six, Alexi and Danielle. Who'd have thought six, the high score? Puts a little bit of pressure on you, so good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? Pam, remember, we're looking for any act that had a UK number one album in the 70s. I bet you've got a brilliant answer. Well, here. think again. <laughs> <laughs> Not my bag, baby. I've just, I'm just going to say the Rolling Stones. I have no idea. OK, the Rolling Stones, says Pam. Um, you do get a red line. It's, uh, it's basically there. That's it. <laughs> um, let's see what happens when we say the Rolling Stones. It's right. 41 for the Rolling Stones takes your total up to 45. Yeah, they had four number one albums between 1970 and 1973. Wow. No number one singles in the 70s for the Stones. Interesting. Mm, thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Caroline. Um, I'm going to take a punt again and go with the Bay City Rollers. Bay City Rollers, says Caroline. Here is your red line. Can you get below that with Bay City Rollers? Let's find out. It's right. And you're through. Very well done indeed. Oh. That goes down to seven. <laughs> seven, that takes your total up to eight. Yeah, two number one albums in the 70s, 74 and 75. They had number one albums, had two number one singles as well, Bay City Rollers. Thank you very much, Richard. Now then, Danielle. You're on six. If you can score 38 or less, you're through. OK. <laughs> Not entirely sure, but I'm just going to go with... Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, says Danielle. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Pink Floyd. There's your red line. Pink Floyd is right. And it gets you through. Very well done indeed. Goes down to seven. Takes your total up to 13. <laughs> Two number one albums for Pink Floyd. Amazingly, neither of which were uh, Dark Side of the Moon, which didn't get to number one. Isn't that funny? Despite being one of the biggest selling albums of all time. Mm. Do you have an answer for this or...? Uh... Oh, uh, um, um, without thinking too long, Wings. Oh, that's a good answer. Um, actually, Paul McCartney wings. Uh, Paul McCartney five wins. points. Five points. Yeah, that's a nice it, answer. Yeah, it's not. No, but if, yeah, if I gave it a bit more. Well, I'll give you some one pointers before yeah. we do the pointless answers. One point uh, for Barbara Streisand, Boney M, Bread Faces, George Harrison, Glenn Campbell, Leo Sayer, Peters and Lee, Roxy Music, Roy Orbison, and the Moody Blues. They're all one pointers. Let's take a look at some pointless answers now, shall we? All of these would add some money to the jackpot. Alice Cooper, Buddy Holly, and the Crickets. Deep Purple are two number one albums in the seventies. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Gary Newman. Uh, also, Gary Newman and Tuboy Army was a separate point of silence. So Mike Oldfield. Neil Young, Harvest from 1972. Shawadi Wadi, Status Quo had three number one albums in the 70s. But lots of others. Andy Williams, Gilbert O'Sullivan, Johnny Mathis, Nat King Cole, Paul Simon, Perry Como. Uh, the Muppets was a point of silence. Very well done. <laughs> that as well. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, well, that brings us to the end of our second round. Pam and Ben, this is where we part ways with you. 
It's been lovely having you on. We'll see you again next time. Um, but uh, thanks very much, meanwhile, for playing, <laughs> Pam and Ben. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, it is now time for Head to Head. Congratulations, Caroline and Ed, Alexi and Danielle. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,250. But before we play the head-to-head, -head, shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit by finding some pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many types of font as they could. Richard. <laughs> uh, we're going to show you six names now. Two of them will be fonts we might have heard of. Two of them will be pointless answers. Uh, fonts that no one mentioned, and two of them are incorrect answers that we made up. See if you can find those two pointless answers. OK, so we're looking for the pointless answers amongst these six types of font. Two of them are made up. And we have got Hemingway, Stoop, Garibaldi, Parchment, Georgia and Conare. Now, remember, you can pool your resources here, so chat as a four if you like. <laughs> Georgia could be one, but that might be scary. Georgia definitely is, but I think that's quite easy. Yeah, yeah I, I recognise that too. Stoop or Canary, I think, maybe. Do you have yeah. those two? Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah why not? Why not? Yeah. 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 <laughs> OK, so Caroline and Ed, what are you going to go for? Um, we'll go for Stoop. Stoop. Let's see, is Stoop a pointless font? <gasps> OK, bad luck, not a font, as it turns out, at all. Alexi and Danielle, what are you going to go for? We're going to go for the Canare. Canare. Let's find out. Is Canare a pointless font? Oh, no, oh. bad luck! <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's quite an achievement as yeah, well. In, a way, that's, really in a way, that's what you want to see, because that's people taking risks. Uh, it's yeah. The truth. yeah uh, now, Stoop, uh, I'm afraid, is a basin in a church that holds water. Oh. So that, that is the other type of font. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and Canari, Vincent Canari, is the guy who invented Comic Sans typeface. Uh, oh. Everyone's favourite. So there's still two pointless answers out here. I'll tell you something that scored points. Three points for Georgia. That's a font that people might have known. Uh, so two of those are pointless. One of them uh, scores... I think, pointless I think I've heard of Garibaldi, so I'm going to say Hemingway and Parchment. You are pointless. absolutely right. Garibaldi scores a point, and Hemingway and Parchment are the two pointless answers. Very well done. If you said those at home. Thank you very much indeed. Well, bad luck. You didn't find the pointless answer, but we didn't lose anything, so it's fine. We've all learned a bit about fonts that we can now forget instantly. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> the first pair, as ever, to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question in the head-to-head -head is all about tabloid sitcoms. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five tabloid-style headlines now, which Describe uh, sitcoms and also show you the year that sitcom was first broadcast. But what are the sitcoms? Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five tabloid sitcom headlines. A. Female cleric creates rural chaos, 1994. B. Tech geeks banished to basement banter, 2006. C. New York flatmates find love over coffee. 1994. D. M4 Mayhem as Phone Affair Blossoms, 2007. And E. Convicts' Families Abandoned in Essex, 1989. Okay, Caroline and Ed, you'll go first. What are you thinking? Okay, um, we're going to go for E. Birds of a Feather. Okay, E. Birds of a Feather. Alexi and Danielle, do you want to talk us through the rest? So, I think A is Vicar of Dibley, uh, B is the IT crowd, C, Friends, and D, Gavin and Stacey. It's quite maybe the IT crowd. Yeah. Fingers crossed. We're going to go for B, the IT crowd. OK, B, the IT crowd. So, we have Birds of a Feather and the IT crowd. Um, Caroline and Ed went for Birds of a Feather for E. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. Birds of a Feather. It's right. And that takes you down to eight. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alexi and Danielle have gone for the IT crowd for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the IT crowd. It is the IT crowd. And that takes us down to 29. 
Very well done indeed, Caroline and Ed. Birds of a feather wins that one for you. You are up one nil after one question. Uh, yeah, they're all well-known sitcoms. So I think it's the obscureness of the clue is the uh, is the thing to go for. And there is an answer that the beaten birds of a feather. And that's the M4 Mayhem, yes. so a huge sitcom, but I think perhaps that doesn't describe the plot as much as you would think. It scores four points. Well done if you said that at home. And the other scores, Vicar Dibley would have scored you 34. And the highest score, unsurprisingly, Friends with 55. Thanks very much, Richard. OK, here comes your second question. Our second head-to-head -head question is all about famous people with airports named after them, Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you anagrams now with five famous people who have airports named after them. We'll also show you where the airport is and the field of activity for which that person was famous. Thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five airport clues, and here they come. A cool romp, merchant and explorer, Venice. He recalled a slug, president of France, Paris. A daring Hindi, prime minister of India, Delhi. Pro ache tips, ancient physician, Kos, and alkali stone, inventor and engineer, Belgrade. Alexi and Danielle will go first. This is one you have to win, don't forget. Uh, we're going to go with the third one down, which we think is Indira Gandhi. Indira Gandhi, say Alexi and Danielle. Now, Caroline and Ed, that board is all yours. Um, top one's Marco Polo. The second one is Charles de Gaulle. And no idea on the other two. So we will go for Marco Polo. OK, Marco Polo. Marco Polo. So we have Indira Gandhi and Marco Polo. Alexi and Danielle said Indira Gandhi. Let's see if that is right for a daring Hindi. is right. That takes you down to 21. <laughs> Meanwhile, Caroline and Ed have gone for Marco Polo for a cool romp. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Marco Polo. Marco Polo is absolutely right. There we are, down to 36. Well done, Alexi and Danielle, back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. <laughs> yes, the bottom two that are the winning answers, because uh, uh, Charles de Gaulle uh, wouldn't have won you the points. Charles de Gaulle would have scored you a 40. Now, the ancient physician, do you know that one? Hippocrates. Hippocrates, yeah. yeah Hippocrates. Like the yeah. Hi Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. Uh, and that would have scored you 10. The best answer, the inventor and engineer. These days, there's an electric car named after him. Oh, um... Tesla, what's his, what's his first name? Nikola Tesla. OK, it's Nikola yeah. Tesla. Very well done if you said that at home, would have scored six points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, here comes the decider. Whoever wins this third question goes through to the final to play for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about short answers, Richard. Yep, five clues to things, all of which have the word short somewhere in the answer. Let's reveal the clues. Here they come. Crumbly dough made with flour, fat and water, typically used for pies, flans and tarts. UK Secretary of State for International Development from 1997 to 2003. Small mammal with poisonous saliva found in North America. Played Ned Nederlander in the 1986 film Three Amigos. And the human mechanism for storing information over a brief period of time. Caroline and Ed will go first. Do you know? I'm going to have to go for the bottom one, I think. We, sorry. <laughs> the bottom one. <laughs> and go for short-term memory. Short-term memory. Say Caroline and Ed. OK, Alexi and Danielle, over to you. Talk us through that board. Uh, so, the top one is, I think, short crust pastry. I think the next one down is Claire Short. And then the fourth one is Martin Short. And we are going to go with... Claire Short. Claire Short. So we have short-term memory and Claire Short. Caroline and Ed went for short-term memory. Uh, let's see how many of our 100 people said that for the bottom one. Short-term memory is right. Down it goes 22. <laughs> Meanwhile, Alexia and Danielle have gone for Claire Short, the uh, Secretary of State for International Development. How many of our 100 people said Claire Short? Claire Short is right. 
22 is what it's got to beat, and it does. Very well done indeed, Dan. It's a seven. Well done, Alexia and Danielle. Finally, you've done it. After three questions, you're through to the final. 2 1. Yeah, beautifully done. Uh, you knew an even better answer, actually. Uh, Martin Short would have scored you four points. So, um, very well played there. The crumbly uh, dough. Short crust. Uh, short crust. That would have scored you 29 points. I'm surprised that nobody went for the human mechanism for storing information over a brief period of time, which is short term memory. <laughs> Amazed. <laughs> Amazed no one went for it. Um, <laughs> The small mammal is the best answer on the board. Uh, and, I mean, if you've got this, very well done. It's the short-tailed shrew. That's a pointless answer. There you go. OK, well, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, Caroline and Ed, that is it. And this is where we say a final farewell. But what a fabulous, pointless career you've had. It's Went from round great. one, first yeah. time round, to the golden couple in the head-to-head. -head. But uh, anyway, I'm afraid this is where we say goodbye. Thank you so much, Caroline and Ed. But for Alexia and Danielle, it's now time for our pointless fun. <laughs> Congratulations, Alexia and Danielle. You have seen off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. <laughs> now, though, you get a shot at our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,250. <laughs> You are just one pointless answer away from taking that jackpot home with you. Uh, what do you want to see come up on the board? There'll be four choices, as ever. Music, words, I think. Although, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> Answers haven't really uh, voted that well for us. Yeah, TV would be nice as well. Um, yeah, music would be good as well. OK, I mean, you'd hope you should cover quite a lot of decent bases here. Four things will appear on the board. We just have to hope something falls within your... Comfort zone. We've got four things. The FA Cup, Paul Weller, 20th century Peters, and openings of Shakespeare plays. Uh, what yeah, do we think? Not quite what I was hoping for. <laughs> 20th century Peters could be like a random good one. I know a little bit about Paul Weller, so I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Should we do Peters? Let's do Peters. 20th century Peters. Yeah, best of luck. There is a TV question in here, so hopefully uh, that might suit you. It's the first one, in fact. We're looking for any presenter of Blue Peter who started in the 20th century. We are looking for any characters in Peter Pan. We're taking the, uh, the Royal National Theatre's adaptation in 1997. Or we are looking for any film starring Peter Ustinov, according to IMDb, please. So presenters of Blue Peter who began presenting at some point in the 20th century, Peter Pan characters or Peter Ustinov films. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. All you need is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? As will ever be. OK, let's <laughs> put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, well, um, I don't know the bottom one. Mm. Like Blue Peter presenters, Anthea Turner, Connie Park, Zoe Salmon. Good. Uh, they're all of an era. See, at the time I'm thinking like Nana. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about like guys, really. Nana, Wendy, Nana, no, obviously big though. Um, Is Nana big? Nana's the dog. Uh, so I don't know. That's the world's dog. That's why I Yes, that one. Um, do you think the Blue Peter ones are yeah, well known? I, I feel like they're like all quite well known. Oh. What, who did you say, who did you say uh, again? Anthea Turner, Connie Huck. I've forgotten oh. what I said. Uh, Zoe Salmon. Zoe Salmon? So that's good. I don't know who that is. And what about like Zoe Salmon, um, Connie Huck maybe? And Ten Nana? seconds left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just to... sure. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't why know. not? <laughs> Um, yes, okay, let's do that. <laughs> okay, well, look, there we are. Your minute's running out as just as you decide on your three answers. So, what are you going to give me? Yeah, so we're going to go um, two Blue Peter presenters. We're going to say Connie Huck. Connie Huck. Who was the other person? Zoe Salmon. Zoe Salmon. Zoe, Zoe Salmon. Salmon. And then from Peter Pan, we're going to say Nana. Nana, of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Zoe Salmon. OK, Zoe Samuel will put last, <laughs> least likely to be pointless. Nana. Nana, maybe. and then Connie Hart will put in the middle. <laughs> OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. Nana, Connie Huck, Zoe Salmon. Well, three answers on the board there. One of those at least could turn out to be pointless and win that jackpot for you. Quite a nice jackpot, £2,250. Uh, what would you like to do with that if you were to win it today, Alexi? 
Um, massive party. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Why not? Perfect. Danielle, how about you? Um, yeah, I was going to say roll in it. Just take it all out and roll in it. But, Just um, take it out and roll. <laughs> <laughs> probably something sensible, you know, like DIY or holiday. OK, well, let's find out. Three answers. Let's see if any of these win that jackpot for you. Your first answer is Nana. In this case, we're looking for characters from Peter Pan. If Nana is pointless, £2,250 will be yours. How many people said Nana? Nana is right. We just have to see if it's pointless now. For £2,250, Nana takes us down through the 20s. It's little 19 for Nana. We now turn to Blue Peter presenters, uh, and you have gone for Connie Huck as your second answer. If Connie Huck is pointless, £2,250 will be yours. How many people said Connie Huck? Well, it's another correct answer. Nana took us down to 19. Connie Huck now takes us down through the 30s into the 20s. Parsing 19 into single figures. Still going down to Connie Huck to six. That's not bad at all. OK, we now turn to your third and final answer, Zoe Salmon. Connie Huck scoring six. <laughs> Let's hope Zoe Salmon is pointless for £2,250. How many people said Zoe Salmon? Oh, no! Uh... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Bad luck! Well, we came very close there with Connie Huck with six points, but I'm afraid you didn't manage to find the all-important pointless answer. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you do win today's pointless trophy, so very well done for that. You've been fantastic right across the show. Very well done. Uh, yeah, it's a good answer, Zoe Salmon, but she didn't make her debut until 2004. <sighs> so an incorrect answer in this category. I'm going to take you through the Blue Peter presenters first. Well done at home if you said any of these. There's some big names here, actually. Uh, Christopher Wenner, Katie Head as a pointless answer. Leela Williams, first ever female presenter of Blue Peter, was a pointless answer. Sarah Green. I mean, more famous, I suppose, for Saturday morning stuff, but she did uh, before that. She presented Blue Peter. Anita West, another early presenter. Uh, Liz Barker, Michael Sundin, Romana Denuncio, Simon Thomas, Stuart Miles and Tina Heath were the other pointless answers. Well done if you've got any of those. Characters in Peter Pan now, all of these were pointless. You could have had Canary Rob, Gentleman Starkey, Jane, Tootles, uh, Shay Turley, Curly. You could have had Neverbird, Noodler, The Storyteller and Wibbles. All of those were pointless answers. Well done if you said Wibbles at home. Um, <laughs> and well done if you're saying it right now. And Peter Ustinoff films. All of these are pointless. Appointment with Death, Lorenzo's Oil, The Great Muppet Caper he's in, We're No Angels, everything pointless there apart from Death on the Nile, Spartacus, Quo Vardis, Top Carpy, Evil Under the Sun, One of Our Dinosaurs is Missing, and Robin Hood, every other Peter Ustinoff movie, as a pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thank you, Alexi and Daniel. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot <laughs> today. It will therefore roll over onto the next show when we will be playing for £3,250. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.